The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today, we're going to uh, talk about a fundamental, and we're going to talk about this part number three. We're talking about love, and we're going to look at just one fundamental truth today, dealing with the fact of how God loves you. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get right into this. Father, I thank you. Bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Father, let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Conforming us to the image of Christ. Growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, go with me to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Now, John 13 to 17 is Jesus' final dissertation before the cross. And Jesus declares that as the Father loved me, I loved you. Continue in my love. Now, there's three important truths in this passage. One being the fact that God loves God. The Father loves me. Now, what does that entail? How, how, how do we understand God's love for God. You know, the dynamic of the Trinity, the eternal Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In eternity past, before the creation of the world, the fellowship. What type of dynamic fellowship must this have been? And this love that is poured out. Now, when I ask people, how much do you think God or the Father loves Jesus? And people say, well, that's... A hundred percent, you know, they, they know God loves Jesus, but when they think of God loving Jesus, they think about the fact that God loves Jesus because Jesus is perfect and Jesus is God. You know, he's fully God and fully man, but they think of God loving Jesus based on the fact he was perfect and based on the fact that he is, but when I say, do you think God loves you? Well, there are people that will say that, yes, God loves me. But I say, how much? And the next answer is dependent on the obedience that they face that day. You know, did I not commit sin? Did I do what I was supposed to do? Did I honor my covenants? Oh, you know, did I lie? You know, I shouldn't have lied. So, you know, God's God's upset with me right now. God doesn't love me the same as he loved me yesterday because yesterday I did everything right. But today I'm making lots of mistakes. And they base love in their life based on how they see God loving them. But the truth of the matter is how God loves Jesus is the same way God loves you. The same way the father loves the son is the way the father loves you. And Jesus says, continue ye in my love which means focus on it. You can't let this slip. You can't not think about this. This has to be a focus of your life. The very first time I heard this truth spoken, like I knew God loved me. But then I heard somebody say, well, God loves you in the same way God loves God. And you just have to sit there and think about it. You're like, hold on. God loving God. How many times do you actually think about that? And the way he loves himself is the way he loves you. God doesn't love you at a lesser degree. He only loves at 100%. He, 
He can only go 100-100. I always tell people, God's not going 50-50 with you. He's going 100-100. What he gives is everything of his love to you. He's not portioning it out. He's not respecting it. He is giving you everything. The next truth I want to look at is in John chapter 17. Go with me to verse 23. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So let me back up. Jesus said, as the father loved me, I love you. So John 15, 9, just make this correction real fast. John 15, 9, I love you in the same way God loves me. So John 15, 9 declares that the son loves you in the way that son is loved by the father same way god loves god he loves you but in the same way the father loves you the the father loves the son the father loves you declared in john 17 23. so between these two truths we see that the way the father loves the son the father loves you and the way the father loves the son the son loves you so in every possible facet of god loving god god loves you which means he loves you perfectly. He loves you at 100%. Let me say this today. Your actions do not dictate the love of God in your life. Now, God wants you to live holy. He wants you to live in purity. He wants you to live in righteousness. He wants you to do what's right. But at the end of the day, your acts of obedience do not dictate or your acts of disobedience does not dictate the love of God. The love of God is independent of you because God loves you in the same way he loves himself. That love is never changing. Now, that's not some free pass to just go and live how you want. It's actually the power of God to empower overcoming victory. How do you overcome compromise? How do you not struggle in sin? How do you not do the things that the world says is okay, but you know is wrong? It's the power of God inside of you because you know that he loves me. And if he loves me, then I can run to him when I'm struggling, when I'm having a bad day and not run from him. So many people run from God when they're, well, you know, I'm struggling today. I'm having a bad day or whatever's going on in their life. And they, they run from God because God must be mad at me. He's not mad at you. In the same way he loves himself, he loves you that way. In the same way God loves God, God loves you. And you will never be able to exhaust that truth of love. It's a fundamental truth of the way God loving God, God loves you. And I could say it over and over because I want you to get this. It's so powerful and it's so impactful and it will change your life. If you can ever receive what this is really talking about tomorrow, we'll probably talk about how to focus on this and how to actually see this come to pass in your life. But for today, we're out of time. So, Father, bless everybody under the sound of my voice. I give you all the glory for everything you're doing. In Jesus mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Church, have a wonderful day. Please make sure you're praying for your pastor. We are in Kansas City. The Lord's doing mighty things. We are seeking the Lord on some different stuff. So just be in prayer for your pastor. We will be back this weekend. So church, I love you. Have a wonderful day. And we will see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow. Oh, the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons. The drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the Carry